What are your thoughts on using a metronome? I find that they're a little like Marmite. People either love them or hate them. If you're more like me and fit into the latter category, then stay tuned for some alternative ways of getting around needing to use one of these. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip here, then please do consider subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. A metronome is often talked about as being a piece of essential equipment for any pianist. When I bought this piano, I got a metronome as a free gift. My old Yamaha Clavanova has a built-in metronome that you activate digitally. However, in honesty, I've almost never used this free gift metronome and I can probably count on the fingers of one hand the number of times that I've used a digital one on my Yamaha Clavinova. I downloaded the Soundbrenner app also onto my iPad and I must admit occasionally I use the metronome on that but it's very rare that I do that in my normal practice sessions. As part of my piano learning journey, I follow a number of groups on Facebook, I'm a member of a subreddit on Reddit, I'm a subscriber to Pianist Magazine, I follow quite a few YouTube channels, and very, very frequently the advice that people are given is to practice with a metronome. And then just as frequently, you'll see students post in for tips on how to do it because it's something they find either very difficult or almost impossible to do. Clearly, a metronome does have its uses. If you want to see how fast or slow something goes, especially when the composer has specifically put a metronome mark in the score, then being able to set your metronome, hear that steady click, is perhaps invaluable. Of course, a second thing that some people struggle with is being able to keep a steady pulse when they're playing something. And again, perhaps practicing with a metronome clicking away in the background will help in keeping this pulse going. And then finally, of course, advice that I'm sure you've seen many times is that if you want to be able to play something faster, then the best way to do this is to start off slowly with a metronome and gradually increase metronome speed over time. And I'm sure for many people, a metronome comes in very useful in these three different scenarios. However, for me, I'm not convinced that it necessarily works best for me. And it's certainly not the only thing I would try if I wanted to do any of them. Let's then take each of these in turn. So for initial tempo setting, then perhaps a metronome is a good fallback position. So for example, when I started trying to learn Chopin's Etude 25, number two, the Bs, my score has a metronome marking of minimal half note equals 112. Well, I mean, I don't have perfect pitch and I certainly don't have perfect timing, so to speak. So how am I going to work out what 112 sounds like? Certainly in this case, then activating the metronome and playing along for two or three bars just to get a feel of how 112 feels under my fingers is a good starting point. And this is in fact what I actually did. And I occasionally repeat the exercise just to remind myself of what this target speed feels like. However, in general, the technique that I prefer to use is to time different sections of a piece as they're played by excellent pianists, then to time myself playing those same sections and compare the amount of time it takes me to play them against what they play. That way I can see whether I'm playing faster or slower than maybe I imagined. In fact, this was the subject of one of my first ever YouTube videos, and I've linked that above for you here so that you can watch it later. For keeping a steady pulse, whilst perhaps at first view the metronome might be ideal in this situation, I'm not really convinced that it's the ideal first line of attack. 
One thing I've noticed when people have posted videos of their playing on Facebook or whatever, looking for advice, is that when they think they've got a problem keeping a steady pulse, in actual fact, more often than not, where the pulse goes off is when they come to a part of the piece that they simply can't play very well. So they'll either slow right down because they find something difficult and call this problems with keeping time, or they'll do the reverse and head off at full tilt with absolutely no control whatsoever. To be honest, it's something I've noticed in my own playing, that when I come to a section of a piece that I'm not overly confident about playing, more often than not, I'll start to speed up. And I think that this is probably working on some kind of subconscious idea that the faster I go, the less evident a wrong note is gonna be. I don't know. Therefore, perhaps a better use of our practice time, rather than trying to keep time to a metronome, is to find those areas of pieces that we're not so comfortable with and we don't play so well, and actually work on fixing those. I'm sure then, and from experience I've noticed, that once you do get a technically difficult passage more under control, the timing falls into place generally all by itself. As for using the metronome as a speed building tool, well, you know, given this has been recommended for so many years, and I'm sure has worked for a great many people, it must definitely work for some. But unfortunately for me, it doesn't. I'm sure you know the advice you've seen a hundred times. You start off nice and slow with the metronome, you know, a, a nice, even, slow tempo. And then once you're comfortable at that slower tempo, you increase the metronome speed by five or 10 beats a minute, perhaps, and you practice at this new, slightly faster speed. Once you're comfortable, you increase the speed again, five or 10 beats per minute, rinse and repeat, until you get to the final tempo you're looking for. My major reservation with this approach, though, is that the way you need to move your hands, I think, when you're playing fast is not the same as you move them when you're playing slowly. An analogy I've heard used in several places is that of running and walking. You know, when you run, it's not the same as walking fast. The way you move, the muscles you use are different and they're used in different ways. And whilst I'm not a great fan of blanket analogies to prove a point, I do think that there's definitely a lot of truth in this idea. I've never really been one to dismiss things out of hand just because I couldn't get them to work once, so recently I went back to this idea of trying to use a gradually increasing speed with a metronome technique. And to be honest, if anything, I found that it actually hampered me rather than helped me. So I'm going to stick with the techniques that I described in a recent video for increasing speed because I find them better. And I've linked that video here for you so you can take a look for yourself. Now don't get me wrong, I have absolutely nothing against a metronome. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that I'm a firm believer that there is no such thing as one size fits all for piano. If metronome works for you, then keep using it. You know, keeping time is something that some people find more difficult than others. I know this. When I was young, I grew up in brass bands long before I ever went anywhere near a piano, and I saw it there. There were some people who couldn't even seem to count to four whilst playing an instrument, yet others that could do it perfectly naturally. And that was even having a conductor in front of you, waving his arms around, there were people who still couldn't keep time very well. So clearly, if you need to use a metronome to help you out with this, then why not? But that said, if you find that the metronome is more off-putting and annoying than anything else, then look for other techniques that might help you more than having that constant click-click. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, click the little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.